I just want to quickly demonstrate the number one reason for lag and general poor performance on the PlayStation Portal or any remote play device really when playing at home. You can see here that as I'm playing Diablo 4, I'm getting drops in picture quality as well as some input lag. There are some gaps in the sound and a number of connection warnings in the top right corner. Occasionally, the connection drops out completely, which is really not fun. Oh, my wireless router is upstairs, but this room has a wireless access point only a meter or so away from the portal, and I don't have any issues whatsoever streaming Netflix, Amazon Prime, or any other content on the TV which is connected to that same access point. So, what is going on? Well, the first thing to understand is that when you're playing at home, your internet connection is utterly irrelevant. It just needs to work. It doesn't need to be fast. And what really matters way more than anything else is not necessarily your home Wi-Fi speed, but its stability. If I bring up a screen recording of an excellent app called Wi-Fi Man, which is freely available on Android, you'll see that each time there is a jump or sudden rise in the latency graph, my connection quality on the portal takes a hit. The jumps aren't always massive, we're not talking about hundreds of milliseconds, but each time there is an increase, it is noticeable on the portal in one way or another. Sometimes it'll be a drop in picture quality, sometimes it'll be a drop in frames and audio, and sometimes there will be some noticeable input lag. Either way, it doesn't make for a quality handheld gaming experience. The reason this happens on the portal and not say when streaming 4K movies on the TV is because the TV buffers the stream, meaning that it's already downloaded the bit you're about to watch, which smooths out all the little drops in the network. That isn't possible when live streaming something interactive like a game, so each time there is a little spike, the portal tries to compensate for that poor connection by dropping the quality of the picture and so on. On the flip side, if I move to the room where my router lives, you'll see that the latency graph remains much flatter with an overall lower millisecond response time. It's much more stable with no peaks at all, resulting in a smooth quality stream with no input lag or drops in quality. This is obviously what everybody hopes for when they buy a portal, but unfortunately, it's not what everybody gets. And I'll be the first to admit that Sony have done a very poor job in supporting their customers when it comes to this. All they've ever really done is state that you need certain speeds in order for remote play to work. And whilst that certainly is true, it misses the most important factor, which is stability. Plus, there are no network tools on the portal to help with this. Something built in to measure performance would have been extremely useful and is something I still hope will be released in a future update. Okay, so we know that our home Wi-Fi isn't all that stable and despite exceeding Sony's minimum speed requirements, we're still experiencing a bunch of different issues. What can we do about that? Well, the first thing to mention is something that you don't need to do and that is port forwarding. In my previous video on this subject, I didn't make it clear that port forwarding is only something that you need to configure if you're trying to play your PlayStation games via remote play away from home. If you're just playing around the house using your own Wi-Fi, you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Someone worse than me. What you should do though is hardwire your console into your router if you can. If you've not already done that, this will solve the vast majority of performance issues straight off the bat and is your top priority if possible. However, if your console is connected by Wi-Fi and you cannot hardwire for whatever reason, you could try a set of LAN over power plugs which use the electrical wiring of your home to route the network traffic. They can be very useful, but they are by no means a silver bullet, which we'll come back to momentarily. The second thing to do is to test how good the stream is whilst being as close to your wireless router as possible. If it's great, but gradually gets worse the further you move away from it, then you know it's time for either a new better router that has better Wi-Fi capabilities, or you could install a few access points around the house. But, 
be very careful with this because generally you have two options with access points. You can combine or mesh the access points together via Wi-Fi, which will be the simpler of the two options, or you can hardwire your access points into your router, which is the most complicated option due to having to install ethernet cable around the house, but it will result in much improved stability. If you're going down the Wi-Fi route, just bear in mind that you need to install the access points in places where the Wi-Fi signal is still good. If you place them too far apart, you'll effectively just be boosting a bad quality signal. Going back to LAN over power devices though, you could use a set of these as a bit of a middle ground to spread your Wi-Fi around the house. However, they aren't the most effective of devices and how effective they are will largely depend on the age, quality, quantity, and complexity of your home's electrical wiring. I actually do use a set of these to get my Wi-Fi downstairs, but in doing so, I lose about 80% of my available connection speed and increase my latency by about five times. If I temporarily run an ethernet cable down the stairs, much to my wife's dismay, and plug the access point into my router directly, then my speeds jump from 55 megabits per second previously to 287 megabits per second. And the latency drops from around 25 milliseconds to just five. So whilst these things are pretty useful, they are a bit hit and miss, often requiring a power reset to get the most out of them. The third thing to do is to optimize your wireless network. And there's a bunch of things that you can do here. The first is to make sure that your portal is running on a 5 gigahertz wireless network and not a 2.4 gigahertz one, which shares its frequency with the likes of microwaves, baby monitors, wireless peripherals, and a whole host of other devices. You should also check for Wi-Fi network congestion from neighboring wireless routers and select the quietest channel that you can. I have a step-by-step -step guide detailing all of this, as well as a whole host of tweaks and settings, which will result in a better gameplay experience on your portal. There should be a link either there or there, and I will put one in the description too. Just remember that the main thing you're looking for is a nice flat latency graph with as low a millisecond response time as possible. Easier said than done, I know, but that really is the key to getting remote play to work flawlessly at home. Oh, and for those that watched my last video about the new public Wi-Fi update on the portal, I'm pleased to say that Sony did end up sending me a brand new portal to replace the one where my right vertical thumbstick all of a sudden stopped working. What's slightly concerning though is the number of other people that seem to be having the same problem or at least similar problems as I did at the same time. I'll do my best to help anyone still struggling in the comments section below. Failing that, the PlayStation Portal subreddit is a pretty helpful community to visit. And lastly, if anyone's interested, I've set up a Discord server. No idea what I'm going to do with it really, but I thought I'd give it a shot since it's quite easy for me to lose track of the threads within YouTube's comments. So come and say hello. If it turns out to be a force for good, I'll keep it going and see where it takes us. The link to join is in the description below. Oh. And if you're looking for a cheap quality game that works great on the portal, Vampire Survivors has just been released on the PlayStation, so check that out. As ever, thank you for watching and a special thanks to anybody that has liked, commented, or subscribed. It means a lot.